Hello, everyone. In this video, I want to uh, show you some basic pawn and games. And then after the basic pawn and games, we're going to make some important decisions in some other end games. But all those end games are going to come back and be related to these basic pawn end games. So let's start. In this position, we have a pawn that has reached the sixth rank, an extra pawn and a king against just a king. Now, here, it matters whose turn it is, because if it is black's turn in this position, black can take the opposition, and we can remember this uh, position like this. If black is taking the opposition, it means that something good for black, but what can be good for black here? Of course, black cannot win this, but black can end the game in a draw here, because if we try to push the pawn, uh, okay, what else should white try? And uh, black plays the queen to d8. Then if we try to keep our pawn, that's going to be a stalemate. And if we just move away, uh, it's just going to be a uh, draw. So going back, if we look at this position, and uh, in the same position, it is one star. It means that it has just been removed from the opposition, which is something good for white. And white will be able to promote and uh, win this king. Now the pawn is uh, promoting and it is six. Now that's one position to, to remember. In this position then, when a, king, when a pawn has reached the sixth rank and our king is also on the sixth rank, then uh, it matters if uh, the defending side has the opposition or not. Now let's look at another position. Let's try to look at this position. This one is always winning for white. So if we try to aim to reach to this position, uh, let's say from other end games, what, what do I mean with that? Even if our pawn is, let's say, on another rank and we're playing this end game and we aim at one point to reach at this position, we should be sure that uh, we will be winning this game with white no matter whose turn it is. And in, in this position, it doesn't matter if it's Black's turn, white's turn, white is always going to be able to win this. So we can keep in mind that if our king is on the sixth rank, the pawn is right behind it. It really doesn't matter whose turn it is, it's always winning. Of course, when I say always winning, and when we are looking at these uh, rules, let's say when the pawn is on the sixth rank, who has the opposition matters, or uh, this one is always winning for white, uh, I'm not talking about the exceptions because, of course, on the edges of the of the chessboard, we always have exceptions. So let's see. Uh, here, if we take the same position exactly on the edge of the chessboard, now this is going to be a draw. It doesn't matter who has the opposition, and uh, regardless, this is going to be a draw. It's still on the edge of the chessboard, and uh, the same on the other edge of the chessboard. Of course, if um, we have this position there, white will not win this. And the same thing if we have a pawn on the sixth rank and the king is on the sixth rank as well. So it was before it mattered whose turn it was, if white was going to win or it was going to be a draw. But here it doesn't matter because we're on the edge of the chessboard. Even if it's white's turn here, it's just going to be a stalemate. It's not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be a winning for white. So uh, let's remember that almost in the crushing majority of end games, being on the edge of the chessboard is has exceptions. Okay, so now let's see. Uh, I do not like just memorizing stuff. So let's uh, try to see why having this position is always winning for white, regardless of whose turn it is. So let's see. Black moves away. Black's turn and black moves away here from the opposition. It's going to be very easy for white to win this. How can white win here? Just by moving the king to where? Just by moving the king to uh, f7, we will be able to promote because we are protecting already the square that white needs to promote. So all of the squares are safe and we will safely promote in the next moves. So if we go back, what if we have the same position on white's turn? Because I said it's always winning for white. White should win. So if it's white's turn, white should just move away and push the pawn without thinking. We just, we just move away and let's say black is trying to keep the opposition. We just push the pawn and we're back to the position that we saw in the beginning when pawn is this rank and uh, 
we have a king against one king. And here it's Black's turn, and Black is moving away from the opposition. And we said that was good for White. White is able to promote this. From this position, we go to one of the first positions. So the position where we have the pawn of the six is one of the most important games we need to know. Uh, when is it good for us uh, to have this position? When not? When is it winning and when not? So let's see another position, which is also basic and important. Let's see if our pawn is from is on one of the let's say um, other ranks. Let's say earlier ranks. Okay, what to do next? Here also, it matters if we have the white pieces or the black pieces. So the idea is this: if we have a pawn, let's say on the second, third, fourth rank, or fifth rank, we should make sure that. To win, we need to get to one of the key squares with our king. And what are the key squares? The key squares are the squares that are right. Two ranks in front of our pawn, okay, and the ones next to them. If with the white king, we can get our king to one of those squares, then we will be able to win this king, promote pawn and win this king. Uh, but if we can't do that, then we will not be able to win this game. It's going to be a draw. So it matters here with white what we play. And uh, to be able to go to one of the key squares, we should always try to first stay ahead of our pawn. Because if our pawn is moving uh, before us, before our king, then the key squares are moving even further away from us. And it's going to be impossible for us to go there and of course, Black is not going to allow us to get to one of those squares because their king is there first already. So if we go back, we should make sure that we don't push the pawn and our king is ahead because after all, we want to be on one of the squares that are ahead of the pawn. Uh, and we should also keep in mind the most important, one of the most important things we should do in an endgame it is taking the opposition. So taking the opposition by default, let's say if I, I don't know what to play in a pawn and game, and uh, I don't want to go wrong. I just take the opposition. Okay, so here, let's take the opposition here. What's going to happen here? So it's already the key square. When we move black up, we are going to be able to move to one of the key squares. And here, let's say black is moving away from the opposition. And no matter what black plays, we will be able to move to one of those key squares. Let's say. And what to play here with black? If it stays on the side. Fine, we can just push the pawn, it's not a problem. Let's also stop us with things uh, on the file of our pawn so that we try to resist and not let us promote this course. Of course, we're not going to push our pawn. Even if we push our pawn, now uh, our key squares are far from our king, and the king is already there. We're, we're not going to be able to win this. We're not going to push the pawn. Let's keep it. The same way, let's always set up our pawn with our king and we'll keep the opposition if we can. That's what's going to be uh, good for white. And when the king moves away, now we flank the king. And um, it's like we every every time we're guaranteeing more squares for our pawn to move safely forward. I don't want to push my pony so that uh, the key squares aren't controlled by the black king. Now here, let's see. The black king... Uh, moves to e5. Again, we can just push the pawn because the king is playing on the side. It's not really a problem for us. But let's look at if the king is moving to d7. Let's take the opposition. The king moves away. Let's try to guarantee some more squares for our pawn to go forward. Right. Okay. Now, again, the black king stays on the side. We're going to push the pawn and it's going to be good for us. And otherwise, if the black king, let's say, moves to the eight, we can finally take the opposition again. And remember, we said before that if our king is on the sixth rank and uh, we have the pawn right behind it, that's only winning for white. I don't have to do anything else. My king reached the sixth rank. Now, uh, no matter what the plays, I'm just going to push the pawn and push it again. And I know that the position is always winning for white. And I was able to reach to, to that position. So if we go back to the initial position here, what if in this position it was not white's turn, but it was black's turn? Let's 
Black's turn, Black needs to make sure that our white king is not moving to one of those key squares. And how to do that? Then Black should move either to c4 or d4. In that way, our king will not be able to go ahead of the pawn, and uh, this is not going to be good for white. And if white just pushes the pawn, we said that's not so good because now the pawn is ahead of our king and the, the key squares are even harder than our king and white will never be able to get there, of course, if black is uh, not allowing the white to do that, playing the right moves. So let's go back here. But what if, let's say, black had played the wrong move? If, black, for example, moves to uh, e4, then we will be able to get to, to one of the key squares because now we can get our king ahead. And uh, let's say the black king moves now to uh, d5. We're back to the position where we're ahead of our, our pawn and taking the opposition. And right in the next turn, we can move to one of the key squares. And let's go back. So here we move king to c3. And uh, if black, let's say, stays on e5, what then? I don't put my pawn because then the key squares are getting further from my king. I can just uh, stay on the side. And again, we are controlling some squares that our king needs to, um, our king is protecting some squares that our pawn needs to uh, promote. And what will black play here? Staying on the side is not going forward. We already see, saw this position. White's taking the opposition and controlling more squares and so on, and white is going to be able to win this game. Now, uh, all these pawn and games that we saw, again, the same thing here. If we take this pawn and game to the edges of the chessboard, it really doesn't matter if it's a white's turn and white is taking the opposition or is being able to, to move to um, a4 or b4. It will not matter. This will be a draw as long as the black king, even black king from now can just move on their turn and go stay in the corner and it's going to be a, the only way that white can win with an extra pawn on one of the files is if the opponent's king is far then we will be able to uh, stop the king from getting close and uh, promote our pawn otherwise it's not going to be able to, to, to uh, it's not going to be possible for white to win a pawn and game with a rook pawn a a file pawn or an or an h file pawn Okay, so these are the basic endgames. Knowing these basic pawn endgames, we are going to see uh, some other endgames where we have to make decisions and um, decide what to play, uh, remembering all these basic endgames. So we're going to see those positions where we're going to make decisions in a part two of this video.